In this lecture, we'll pick up on the idea of developing your existing workforce or human resource development. Once the most qualified applicants have been selected and have been offered positions and have accepted the offers, they must be formally introduced into the organization and be trained so that they can be productive members of the workforce. Orientation familiarizes the newly hired employees with fellow workers, with company procedures, the physical properties of the company. Oh, it generally includes a tour of the building, introduction to supervisors, coworkers, and subordinates, and the distribution of organizational manuals describing the policies of the organization on things like vacation, absenteeism, lunch breaks, company benefits, and so on. Orientation also involves the social also involves socializing new employees into the ethics and culture of the company. Although recruiting and selection are designed to find employees who have the knowledge, skills, and abilities the company needs, new employees still must undergo training to learning how to do their specific job tasks. On-the-job training allows workers to learn by actually performing the tasks of the job, while classroom training teaches employees with lectures, conferences, videotapes, case studies, and web-based training. Development is training that augments the skills and knowledge of managers and professionals. Training and development are also used to improve the skills that, that employees have in their present position and to prepare them for increased responsibility and job promotions. Assessing an employee's performance, his or her strengths and weaknesses on the job, is one of the most difficult tasks of managers. However, performance appraisal is crucial because it gives employees feedback on how they are doing and what they need to do to improve. It also provides a basis for determining how to compensate and reward employees and it generates information about the quality of the firm's selection, training, and development activities. This slide shows a list of uh, several different characteristics that can be assessed in a performance review. For example, productivity, how hard the rate at which work is performed, quality of the output, job knowledge, problem solving, communication, initiative, that is identify and address a problem without being asked, adaptability, planning and organizing skills, Teamwork and cooperation, how well, how effective one is on the team. Judgment, the ability to determine the appropriate actions when needed in a timely manner. Dependability, creativity, sales, being able to demonstrate selling uh, skills and selling processes, etc. Customer service, uh, interacting with customers. Leadership, which is the ability to serve as a doer and a guide and bring other people along in the right direction. And financial management, for example, that is making sure that the numbers work. These are many of the skills that can be evaluated in a performance appraisal. The appraisal itself can be objective and or subjective. An objective assessment is quantifiable a company can also use tests and as some sort of an objective method of assessment. Whatever the method they use, managers must take into account the work environment when they, uh, the work environment and the, uh, the other people that the individuals interact with when they appraise performance objectively. When jobs do an objective, well, excuse me, when jobs do not lend themselves to an objective appraisal, the manager must relate the, the employee's performance to some other standard. One popular tool used in subjective assessment is a ranking system, which lists various performance factors on which the employee ranks, the manager ranks employees against one another. Although used by many large companies, ranking systems are unpopular with many employees. Another performance appraisal method used by many companies is a 360 degree feedback system, which provides feedback from the panel from a panel that typically includes superiors, peers, and subordinates. Because of the tensions that such a thing may cause, peer appraisal appears to be difficult for many. However, companies that have success with 360-degree feedback tend to be open to learning and willing to experiment, 
and they're led by executives who are direct about what the expected benefits are, as well as some of the challenges associated with a 360 performance uh, review process. The performance review is an important part, both on the receiving side as the employee, but also on the manager's side to bring out the best in your employees and help them improve. In the next lecture, we'll talk about some challenges in, resource, in human resource management.